Welcome to the Activist Studio. I'm your host, Ashara Ikundaya. We are here in Denver, Colorado, at Free Speech TV. And in beautiful Five Points, I am joined today by two of my dear friends, amazing activist and artist in the sense of loving community, Dr. Vincent Harding, who is the co-founder of the Veterans of Hope Project and preeminent scholar on African-American culture in this country, in the United States. My sister friend, Chris Abrams, co-convener at Let Us Rise, a new broad-based social group in organizing. Uh, you'll talk a little more about it and how I can, like, maybe figure out how to say it smoothly. But it. also uh, a producer for many years and a uh, fundraiser for many organizations. So thank you for joining us here on the Activist Studio. Glad to be here, my sister. Yes. And, um, we are going to have a really loose conversation today about the work in the community and your work um, and how you've come to be uh, in agreement with, you know, your spirit decided you were going to be activists and educators in this lifetime. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing a little bit about how that came to be. But before we get to that, uh, our random question of the day, at least the one I'm going to ask this time, is about art. And if you could think briefly and uh, give me an idea of which artist in this generation or another generation has most influenced how you think about the world. Hmm. Oh, y'all are thinking way too long. <laughs> Chris, tell me, who do you think? Well, about? the first thing that came to mind, and I'm not sure it influenced the way I think about the world, but the way I interact in it more. and move in the world is actually Brahms, the composer. Yes. Um, I was raised a classical violinist and absolutely love chamber music and Brahms's chamber music speaks to my heart more than anything else and it's about valuing every voice mm -hmm. and it's complex and it's thick and it's deep and it's a to me, it is fundamentally about love as well and the way the instruments interact and massage the melody. It's just nice. phenomenal. That's nice. Thank you. Dr. Harding. I always find it very difficult to make these kinds of choices because so many people, <laughs> yes. so many experiences, so many sounds run through my mind when I hear a question like that. But I'll just pick one out. Langston Hughes hmm. would be one that I would work with for now. Next moment, next question, I would probably work with someone else. Yes. But I am deeply moved by Langston's poem concerning America. Hmm. America will that be. That yes. set of lines that he brings out of the 1930s. America, you've never been America to me. And then he doesn't stop there no. complaining. You've never been America to me, but I swear this oath, you will be. And that determination to bring this country into its real life yes. is what moves me in that poetry. And there's lots of music that does the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, lots of other kind of art that does the same thing, but Langston comes to my mind. Oh, let America be America yes. again. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And I, I think those are really good segues into, you know, some of who you all are and how you, you've come to be um, cultural workers and community uh, activists in our community. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, your upbringing. Part of the, the really the beauty of this show today is that we have a cross-generational opportunity to talk about what movement building looks like, what it looked like and what it looks like now, and how we all move differently uh, in the world to make, make it better, hopefully. At least some of us try to make it better. But Dr. Harding, talk to me a little bit about where you were born and if you were born into an activist family, or was it the situation of, of, of society that warranted uh, your becoming who you are? 
I'm trying to decide, my sister, where to come in on those questions. Yes, they're long. Maybe I should start out by saying I have some real difficulties with the terminology and language of activist. Mm. Um, It troubles me somewhat in the same way that the minister troubles Mm. me. You go into a religious community, which is supposed to be a religious community, which is supposed to be, therefore, a community that ministers and serves, but this is the minister. Mm. So, too, in a democratic community, Mm. where we are all supposed to, especially in this country, committed to creating a more perfect union, acting to create a more perfect union, yes. but some of us are called activists. Yes. What I am trying to be is simply a participant in the process of creating a more perfect union on behalf of those who have lived before, yes. on behalf of those who have not lived yet, and on behalf of those who are living now. So. That has to be my own understanding of definition. And for me, probably one of the deepest <clears throat> understandings of my own life is that my calling is to be a teacher. That's mm-hmm. who I am. More than activist, more than the other name, I am a teacher. And so with all of that, Thank you. I thanks. should stop right now and just let you know that <laughs> that's where I'm trying to place and replace, frame and reframe mm-hmm. what, what we're talking about. Thank you. Thank you. That, that speaks volumes uh, to me uh, and, and to how we think about identity. But let's talk a little bit. Hmm. I mean, well, the question is really about upbringing, and you can go wherever you like to go with it. Right. You know. It's helpful to respond after you, because I don't know that I go by that language either. What The role I see myself is playing is helping in any way that I can this country come into integrity with its values. And it feels to me like my heart is not free until that happens. And... Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why that happened. I guess if, if I had to re- relate it to my upbringing, I, um, I was quite a tomboy, you know, and when I hit adolescence, I realized I'm not free. I need to be, I get to be a woman now in a world where we're not supposed to be powerful. Yes. And that was my first awakening. And then the, the awakenings kept coming, you know, when I got to college and was studying the true history of this country rather than what we're taught or what I was taught in grade school. Uh, my anger burned hotter <laughs> yeah. because it's not just about gender, it's about race and class and, and more in general power over. And um, and that's not what we're taught America is about. So so that's how I see my life is unfolding, is, is figuring out my role in helping to bring this country in integrity with itself and inviting others to step into that as well. Thank you. And I guess my childhood was growing up in the same Harlem where Brother Langston operated and realizing that it was true that America was not what it claimed to be or even more important, what it could be. Mm -hmm. And so from the beginning, it was very clear to me that there was work to do. Yes. And I wanted to be a part of that work. And so we're talking about what that means as movement. And that's a very broad term, you know, the movement of progression, hopefully of elevation and of enlightenment even. But can you give me a a definition, Dr. Harding, of movement, the movement, if there is such a thing? Mm -hmm. Because it's all humanity. But we, again, use these terms to talk about how we operate with each other as humans. Movement building. My dear friend uh, Martin King used to use the phrase, we've got to find a way to organize goodness. Yes. (laughs) Okay. That's a beautiful understanding. Yes. That what we recognize Mm -hmm. is that there is power, beauty, goodness, love out there. Mm -hmm. 
it can only carry out its best possibilities when somehow people gather together with it, around it, in a way that we would call organized. Mm. And in the organizing, in the coming together, in community, in the determination that we will move ahead, that we will create something new in that process, movement is created. Movement doesn't come from seven guys sitting someplace yes. and say, we will have movement next week. No, it comes out of months, years, centuries sometimes before we can see something that results in movement. That's certainly been the case in this country in many, many ways. Chris, talk about Let Us Rise as a movement. Mm, good. Let Us Rise is... Um, I believe a new kind of organization. Uh, we're not seeking to become yet another organization. We're seeking to provide a space where people can do this organizing that Dr. Harding's talking about. So what Let Us Rise is doing is um, inviting you, if you're an individual, or um, you, if you have an organization, if you're an organization, to meet with your constituents, your members, the people that are part of that organization. If you're an individual, to meet with your friends, your, your social networks, your families, and envision the kind of society that you yearn for, that you want to see. What kind of United States do you want to leave to your grandchildren? Yes. What kind of United States would be in integrity with what we've always said it is? Um, or what kind of community do you yearn for? And the reason we're starting with that is um, so much of activism, in my experience, is based on saying no to what is, on anti this, stop that, mm -hmm. end this. Even the, the term not for profit is yes. defined against what we say we don't want. Yes. And that's a problem because that means we'll always stay there. We can stop something, but what's going to replace it? Um, so we formed to say, all right, we've got these amazing organizations that are already doing this great work in one community or on one issue or uh, one set of issues. We haven't found a way to come together yet yes. to broaden our constituency so that we actually have the power to create the change we want to see. And we haven't found a way to, to, to give voice to that positive vision, to that yearning. And we haven't created a container, at least in a long time, in my lifetime, as far as I know, in this country, for that personal transformation that Dr. Harding was talking about, for that rising into our best selves, our most loving mm -hmm. selves. Our authentic selves. Our authentic selves. Yes. Who we truly are capable of being versus who we're constantly told we are by the mainstream media, by other people. Right. Um, so that's what Let Us Rise is doing. It's just an invitation. We have this visioning circle process. You can uh, go to the website and download a, a host's guide for hosting a visioning circle, which you have actually mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. and hosted. And, and, yeah, and we're going to talk a lot more about that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll end there. But um, but that's what Let Us Rise is doing. And the idea around catalyzing a movement is people are inspired by what's possible. Yes. And that's what's sustaining. And, and when it's coming from love, that's what's sustaining. Um, and when you have a process that's simple and easy to do and empowers people in doing it, that's, that's the, the seed of a movement. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meditate on that. <laughs> and we're going to get ready to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about the Veterans of Hope Project and Let Us Rise and how these organizations move in community, even just in the language, Veterans of Hope and Let Us Rise. Mm -hmm. So stay right here. We're going to get some more tea, and we'll be right back. You're watching The Activist Studio. Thanks for joining us. You're watching Free Speech TV, what democracy looks like. Hello, my name is Omar Kotandi, and I'm an intern here at Free Speech TV. Building the nation's first progressive independent television channel, you need broadcast equipment and lots of it. When Free Speech TV first brought the radio program Democracy Now! to television, we literally had no picture, just sound from the internet. But thanks to contributions from viewers just like you, we were able to invest in this satellite receiver. 
Now we deliver Democracy Now! to your home every day and on time. Keeping a 24-7 television channel on the air is expensive and we've got a long way to go if we're going to be as strong as corporate channels like Fox News or MSNBC. But when everyone watching Free Speech TV decides to become a supporting member, it will happen. Thanks again for your contributions. We hope you like what we're doing with your money on your channel. You found us. We are here at the Activist Studio. This is Free Speech TV, and I'm Ashara Ekundayo. I'm visiting with my friends Chris Abrams and Dr. Vincent Harding. And uh, we have been talking about movement building and organizing, but really we've been loving. Loving in community, loving in spirit. And I, I want to I continue on with that, Chris. You talked a little bit uh, before the break about some of the work, or at least the mindset of Let Us Rise, and, and how that movement is starting to cycle in uh, Denver, and, and nationally as well. But uh, Dr. Harding, I want to talk with you a little bit about the Veterans of Hope Project and how that started and really what the premise is around it, because there have been so many amazing gifts to community that that, that project has brought uh, on a national level here to Denver. My wife and I began that project, Shara, largely as a way of sharing. In the course of our life, we've been gifted with the possibility of knowing, being with, being related to all kinds of magnificent human beings who are working for the transformation of their communities, of their nation, of their world. Yes. And it became clear to us, since on a deep level we are both teachers, that it would be deeply unfair to our students not to introduce them to women and men who were living such magnificent and giving lives. Yes. And as a matter of fact, in a retreat that took place not far from here, uh, back in the 90s, it was one of these young people who met some of the elders that we knew who had been involved in the freedom movement in this country, mm -hmm. uh, it was some of the young people who said, after they heard a bit of the stories of the elders, they said, we don't know your story. Right. The books that we've been given, the <laughs> yes. newspapers, the video, we don't know, you. we need to know your stories. And it was clear to us that that became, that that should become one of our major responsibilities to find a way to make available to younger people the stories of the elders who have lived lives of tremendous compassion, mm -hmm. commitment, mm -hmm. and creativity in building new possibilities for us all. And so we have tried to be in touch with not only people who are personally known to us uh, from our work, mm -hmm. but be in touch with women and men uh, in other parts of the world as well who have been working for compassionate social change. We bring them to Denver, sometimes yes. we go to where they are, and we sit with them with professional uh, videographers and we ask them to tell us their story. Yes. Tell us how they got involved in the life that they have been living. What took them into the task of working for change? What was working inside of them? What had happened outside of them? 
what keeps them going on the path of working for a better world. And as they tell those stories, we uh, try to capture those stories and then editing them, we try to make them available yes. uh, to those whose lives are still being shaped and formed so that the elders and the young people can come together around this matter of life lived for others. Yes, thank you. And those, those, those individuals, it's, their work, it's, it's, uh, the range is huge. Thanks. I mean, they are authors and poets and protesters and uh, actors. And Danny Glover, Sonia Sanchez, Bernice Johnson Reagan. Dolores Huerta. Dolores Huerta. Yes. Ann Braden. Yes. Yes. It's good work. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Chris, do you want to add more to all of the amazing newness, uh, which is really all about going back and fetching who we truly are as authentic humans and, and the work that Lotus Rise is doing? Hmm. Well, Let Us Rise, uh, more formally speaking, I've talked a little bit informally, is seeking to partner with individuals and organizations to create a positive vision for a society, a society rooted in love, mm -hmm. in personal responsibility, and in democracy. And um, we chose love because all else seems to flow from that. Truth, caring for one another, sharing, yes. um, working together. And um, in my own personal uh, history of activism, I realized after a while that I was not working from love. I was working from blame and anger and scapegoating and uh, frustration, and I wasn't truly in my power. Yes. And, um, and then I looked around as I was having this realization and realized, well, a lot of us are in that place. And, but yet, the people who truly inspire me, Dr. King and Gandhi, and uh, they were not coming from that place. And that is not, that to be stuck in frustration and blame and scapegoating is not who I wish to be. And um, so let's transform together is, is, is the thinking of Let Us Rise. And so we do it. Our first guiding aspiration on the leadership circle is, or a guiding principle is every moment is an opportunity to choose love. That's every correct. moment. It's not your whole life. It's not yes. what you do with your whole life. It's how do you treat the person who just cut you off? How do you treat yourself when you're feeling down? You know, do you go zone out to TV for three hours or do you actually take care of yourself and yes. do the work you need to do? And how do you treat others who are on the other side of the political divide? I mean, that's been one of the weaknesses of our movement for, um, for the last decade or at least is we, we preach to our choir and, and don't know how to talk to people who don't believe what we do or don't have the same experiences. Right. So we can learn some more information by going to the website. There's uh, an amazing video, a uh, short, not long, video there. What is, what's the website? Tell it's letusrise.org. And it's got video, it's got the whole map of how this social networking campaign around visioning is going to work. Mm -hmm. It allows you to submit your vision to the website. We've already got 12 or 15 visions up there. Yes. It's searchable, so if you're interested in what people are saying about, say, sustainability or racial justice, you can search it and pull up all the visions. So it's, it's an exciting website. It is exciting. <laughs> it is. LetUsRise.org. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Harding, uh, the Veterans of Hope Project, the website is, it is veteransofhope.org. Same, yes. And what I was just thinking about was how beautiful it's going to be 40 years from now when those who are carrying on the Veterans of Hope sit with Chris mm -hmm. and ask her to remember how she got started. <laughs> and what it was that moved her out into the world in a new way. And uh, I would love to be able to <laughs> be around for that interview. Yes. I may have to be in some different way, but I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we have a, a couple of action calendar points. We're going to get through a couple of those and uh, get a closing statement from you all. I'm just going to read uh, a couple of them off. 
here and, and how viewers can get involved in some of the work, organizing, movement building, whatever, going on in the, this country, in the United States. July 4th, Mad Society Project Dead Prez benefit show in Los Angeles at the Malibu Inn. Check it out at madsocietyproject.com for other shows as well. July 5th, Independence Day celebration national event celebrated also in Colorado. Uh, Denver's Mercury Cafe, again, here in Five Points with Debajo del Agua. And their website is Debajo del Agua, D-E-B-A-J-O-D-E-L-A-G-U-A dot com. Also, July 11th, Hip Hop Roots Rock for Racial Economic Justice in Washington, D.C., 7 p.m. at the Potter's House. Their site is www.oneworld.net. Also, August 1st through 3rd, Rage Against the Machine, headlining at Lollapalooza 2008, Chicago, Illinois. Man, I wish we could go to that. <laughs> I want to go to that. Chicago's Grant Park, www.ratm.com. August 24th through the 28th, the Festival of Democracy, five days of live cultural activism and artist in Denver, Colorado, during the Democratic National Convention, www.madsocietyproject.com. October 19th, International Media Democracy Day, everywhere, everywhere. Protest.net is their website. And our last action calendar note for the day, September 2nd, the March for Our Lives, St. Paul, Minnesota, the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. They are putting on an amazing direct action piece going down in St. Paul. Their website is www.economichumanrights.org. And big ups to them. We uh, met those, those, those folks over at the National Conference for Media Reform. And before we go into our last segment, which is about, you know, the last hotness, we used to call it something else, but we're going to try to, it's just something fun, not necessarily fun, but something relevant in community that's happening on the web that someone on our staff found. I want to get a couple of uh, last statements from you all in regards to the next step. If you could give the audience one thing to do, what would that, what would that be? Dr. Harding. I think it would be to hook up with somebody else and ask the question and find a way to open the question, what do I need to be and do in order to create a more perfect union in this country? And Chris, what would you say? Very similar, um, that the work of Let Us Rise is to communicate to everyone that we have the power to change this world and it's time for us to take responsibility for it. And the way we are suggesting we take responsibility is get very clear on the world that you want to see and Thank share you. that with others. And you can learn, you know, one way of doing that is available at lettusrise.org, but there are many other ways out there. Thank you. So the hot fire Last point of the day, Just Seeds Visual Resistance Artist Cooperative is a decentralized community of artists who have banded together to sell their work online in a central location and to collaborate with, to support each other in social movement. Check them out at justseeds.org, J-U-S-T-S-E-E-D-S dot O-R-G. Thanks for joining us today on the Activist Studio. We're looking forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you all for being here thank with you. me. Thank you. And thank you for doing your work in community. Okay, and thank you for doing your work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're out. Woo!